Hey friend, welcome to the Self-Care Isn't Selfish podcast. I'm your host, Emily Nichols. As a Whole30 certified coach, wife, busy working boy mom, and your self-care guru, I'm here to help you start putting yourself first without the guilt. Each week you'll hear motivating and practical tips on how you can create a habit of self-care through interviews with my amazing guests or quick solo episodes with me. After each episode, you'll walk away with an action plan and feel empowered to implement what you have learned into your life. So grab a cup of coffee, glass of wine, or your favorite sparkling water, and let's do this. You're listening to episode 20 of the Self-Care Isn't Selfish podcast. I am so excited about today's guest. It's my husband, Dustin. (laughs) Now, this whole month, I've been talking a lot about Whole30, gearing up for the January Whole30, and I've shared my story of how my husband and I began our Whole30 journey together back in 2015, and I thought it was only fitting that he would come on the show and share his transformation journey as well. I think it's really interesting to hear the male perspective and um, all the things he's accomplished since taking control of his health. And speaking of transformations, one last reminder that the January Whole30, my coaching group, is starting up so soon. So we begin our prep on January 1st. On Monday the 6th, that will be day one of your Whole30, and I'll take you all the way through your 30 days, your reintroduction, and into food freedom, all via my online course, my app, my free online community, and so much more. I'm pretty much your accountability partner, your tough love cheerleader, just to get you through the whole 30 and to the other side to your food freedom. So click the link in the show notes to sign up. As a reminder, all of my podcast listeners get a discount if you use the code SELFLOVE at checkout, all one word, all caps, you'll receive a special discount for being a podcast listener. So let me tell you about my husband, Dustin. If you follow um, me on social media, which you should, at Emily Nichols 22 just to get a behind-the-scenes look of what's going on in our lives, um, you will see him doing a lot of outdoor stuff. He's a big outdoorsman, loves hunting, fishing, loves animals in general, and he loves to race competitively. He's a, mar- a new marathon runner, which we'll talk a little bit more about, um, and we like to do Spartan races, not together, because <laughs> I'm so short and so slow, and he's very competitive and fast, so he goes with the competitive people, and I find tall friends to help boost me over walls and whatnot. But my husband and I have been together um, since we were freshmen in high school. We both went to the same high school. We went to um, IU together as well and got married a year after college. And we've been married 15 years now. And our lives have gone through different seasons and transitions as most couples and families do as far as, you know, getting our first dog Um, job transitions, having our two boys, Dylan and Tyler, and um, that's come with a lot of struggles. And we'll share a little bit more about how Dustin's health was at a very critical point um, in his life and our lives as a family and how Whole30 helped transform that for us. So I really hope you enjoy this conversation. I have to laugh because when I was editing it, I had to edit out so much because of all of my silly g- giggling because we were sitting in our closet together drinking some Waterloo. The dog busted in. It was just so real life. But I hope you enjoy this conversation with my husband, Dustin, and maybe share it with a loved one in your life as well. Okay, gang, welcome back to the show. You guys, I'm so excited. It's my very first male guest. It's my husband, Dustin. Dustin, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> We're, if you've watched my stories, you know I'm recording from our closet. So <laughs> this is real funny. The kids aren't here. We just had to lock the dog out of the room. We got a couple of sparkling waters and we're ready to dig into this conversation. So babe, you know, the first question I ask everybody is what does self-care mean to you? So Dustin, what does self-care mean to you? Self-care to me is 
putting the right things in my body and taking care of myself to um, maximize my physical and mental health and also doing whatever I can to minimize stress in my life and anxiety. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to get into that a little bit more, but you're exactly right. Mental and physical health is everything. So, well, tell everyone about yourself. I know everything about you, but not everyone knows you like I know you. So tell everyone a little bit about yourself, kind of what you do, what your hobbies are. Let's learn about Dustin. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) This is weird. I work in agricultural research and I work at a large starch manufacturing company and I work in a smaller group within that company developing new specialty corn hybrids specifically for our company. I have a little bit of travel with the job and about a third of the year I'm outside out in the field working and about two-thirds of the year I'm in the office. So that's part of my the work part of my life. Hobbies I enjoy hunting and fishing and running and lifting weights chasing around the kids. Well, I want to dig into your health journey a little bit more. I've been talking a lot about Whole30 this month since the January Whole30 is coming up. And we began this Whole30 journey together back in 2015. And your health was at a really critical point in our lives, I would say. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So can you tell everyone a little bit about your life pre-Whole30? Yeah, like you said, in 2015, basically my my health was at rock bottom at that point. I had a rough previous six years, so I used to be in really good shape, run all the time, and then had Dylan in 2008, our oldest son, and then in 2009 I was put on rotating shift work, not by choice with work, so I would work uh, night shift for two weeks, afternoons for one week, and I would work one week on days, and I really fell into a very bad sleep pattern for two and a half years while I was on that rotating shift work. I would sleep really good during the day, but I could not flip back to being on days. So that schedule went on until 2012. Finally got moved back to day shift, but the sleep issues did not go away. They got a little bit better, but I continued to just really struggle with my sleep. I started piling on weight. I tried to get back into running and exercising. Just couldn't shed the pounds my whole body hurt, my hips and my knees would ache. What was your mental state like at that point? Yeah, basically I was not enjoying everyday life. I was just going through each day, just surviving, trying to get through the next. Yeah. I know speaking from being there, it was a really high stress time. And it was like, if you didn't have a good night's rest, which was most nights. Yeah, probably four out of five nights would yeah. not be good. Yeah, like all of us would feel it the next day, and I feel like we were kind of walking around on eggshells with you because we were like, we don't want to get dad mad. We don't want to, you know, cause dad any stress and whatnot. Definitely wasn't fully enjoying the kids the way I should have been just due to my state of mind from not sleeping well. And then um, fast forward to 2015, my back, I started having some pretty major back pains in my lower back, and that all kind of went back to when I was 11. I had fractured my back when I was 11 and had a condition called um, spondylolisthesis. <laughs> Say that three times Spondylolisthesis. <laughs> it's an issue where one vertebrae slides over the other. So I was in a body cast for about six weeks when I was 11 years old to help fuse that. It was a, it was a pars fracture. So the fracture healed, but I still had the the slip forward on the disc or on the uh, vertebrae. And with the age and the weight and just not taking care of myself, the disc slipped out and it was bulging and compressing a nerve pretty severely in my back. So that summer I started looking for uh, solutions for it. Went to the chiropractor, tried to get adjusted. That made it worse. I went to a ortho doctor. They did x-rays, found out what the issue was. Their suggestion was to stop running and stop weightlifting, which I'd started doing to try and lose weight. So basically, I was left with no no good options to, to really get healthy and um, get rid of the back pain. So that's where Whole30 came in. So we decided to give it a shot together in it was September, September of 2015. We had heard about it through your brother, and he printed off all the rules for us off the web page. And it was like, oh, my gosh, this is so hardcore. <laughs> but we decided to do it together, which I think made it a little bit easier. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, I was <clears throat> willing to try anything. And my brother was telling me how the, the Whole30 
reduces any foods that can be um, inflammatory to your body. It was worth a try to see if that would help with the back pain and also the people's sleep improved after doing an elimination diet like that. So with still having lingering sleep issues and insomnia and the, the back issues, I was ready to go all, all in on the Whole30 yeah. to write out. Tell us about day one of the Whole30. Yeah, so we... <laughs> part. It was not good. <laughs> part of struggling with all the uh, the issues the previous six years, I'd turn to like beer and alcohol to try and try and cope with the sleeping. And that night before the whole thirty, we went out to a uh, a barbecue with the friends and had probably too few many beers, all kinds of junk food. So we started it on a Sunday morning, the, our first whole thirty. Wake up hungover. <laughs> And we our, had no food our in fridge is empty and we didn't know what in the heck to eat. We were eating apples and cucumbers. That's all we had that was compliant. Yeah, we had lots of cucumbers from the garden and just <laughs> a little bit of fruit in the in the drawers. And um, other than that, we, we didn't have a clue what to eat. Yeah, it was ridiculous. So I remember going to the store that day and I spent a long time there just with my phone out Googling what was compliant and what wasn't. So tell us how you felt during the whole 30 and how you felt at the end. Do you think it was a little easier maybe doing it together that made it a little easier versus if you were doing it by yourself? Yeah, I think there's there's definitely an advantage doing it with somebody else and having a partner. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, both of you can compare your experiences and know, know what the other's going through. Because for the first 10 days, I was struggling with headaches and basically sugar withdrawal and the hardest days. All all <laughs> kinds of aches and pains. But how'd you feel at the end? Day 30. Yeah, day 30, I was a new person. How so? Sleep improved. I think about three weeks in, I started sleeping really soundly all the way through the night. I could tell my clothes were getting looser already after three weeks, even though we weren't weighing ourselves yet. Mm -hmm. I'd already been lifting weights before that. I joined the gym probably that June, so I'd been lifting weights and the first 10 days, every time I would lift heavy, say on bench press, I would get a headache almost immediately. I remember that. Like, right, really dull headache in the back of my head. And I think that's just from the lack of uh, refined sugars that we were taking in. Yeah. So we went on vacation right after we finished our Whole30. We didn't do a proper reintroduction <laughs> at all. But you felt so good. You kind of kept doing your own version of the Whole30 through the holidays. It's yeah. kind of like your version of food freedom, right? I stayed pretty pretty strict to the Whole30 guidelines all the way past Christmas. So I think we um, we finished that first round mid-October, like around October 16th or 17th. Mm -hmm. Aside from having a few beers on vacation and having a few cheap meals there, I stayed pretty clean. I splurged on Thanksgiving and had the pies and all the things I really like. And same deal with Christmas, but it was um, immediately back into the clean eating and mm -hmm. just seeing how far this the whole 30 would take me. So we're almost five years post our first whole 30. Just as a reminder, it's not about weight loss, but Dustin, how much weight did you lose starting with whole 30 and the time span? Yeah, starting from the beginning, I'd already lost about seven or eight pounds on my own just mm -hmm. that summer trying to trying to run and trying to lose weight because of the back issues, but total weight loss is about 50 pounds. Yeah. Like you guys, I, I'll post a before and after picture because like his actual head lost weight, like his actual face was so inflamed. Like it looks like his whole head lost weight. Like it's almost comical when like time hop comes up with pictures of you now from like six years ago or seven years ago. We're like, what yeah, the heck? Look like a completely different person. You were a completely different person from the inside out, though, mm -hmm. from the inside out. Well, what does your food freedom look like now? Like, we don't really do Whole30, a strict Whole30 very much anymore. Like, we may do it, like, in January after the holidays. But what is, how do you eat now? Right now, I would say probably 80% of what I eat is goes along with the Whole30 guidelines. But I'm not afraid to have pizza or some cake at a birthday party or, say, we go out to lunch for work to have a hamburger or something. Mm -hmm. So I, I pretty much eat what I feel like eating now, but I, I know what I can get away with and what doesn't agree with me. And yeah. 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 Tell them a little bit, you know, Dustin is a runner and he does a lot with 
his heart rate. He really pays attention to his heart rate and his numbers and his stats. And you've shared this in our Whole30 groups before. You look back at data when you've been eating, like, you know, a lot of sugar or gluten. Tell them a little bit how you see your heart rate change and the way you perform as well. Yeah, I can definitely tell in the in the perceived effort of my workouts and runs, the heart rate is way higher when I'm not eating 100% clean. And, it, and clean meaning clean for you. Yeah, well, clean meaning according to like the Whole30 guidelines. Sure, sure. So last summer, I was in peak shape training for the Spartan World Championships. I was eating clean, wearing my heart rate monitor for every run, and I did one run, let's say it was 85 degrees, five miles, and collected the heart rate data there. And then after I went through the the, uh, big world championship race, I kind of relaxed what I was eating, and I had a lot of pizza and cookies and whatever I really wanted for Mm -hmm. about three weeks. And when I started back running, just due to the type of foods I've been eating, my heart rate was running, I think it was 10 to 12 beats per minute higher because I I ran a five-mile run the exact same course that I'd done before. The weather was identical. I was wearing same uh same shoes same heart rate monitor and the heart rate was 10 beats per minute higher yeah i think that's so interesting that's so interesting just to see like the the data like how it actually affects physically your body eating in those ways and just thinking about over time eating that way and i even see it in my resting heart rate too yeah because my garmin watch does an optical uh wrist heart rate monitor so it gives you your average resting heart rate and i can definitely tell Mm -hmm. by looking back at the data when i'm on a clean kick or when I've kind of splurged too much. Mm -hmm. Now, what other positive things happened in your life after you became healthier? The, the job that I have now is it's almost a dream job compared to what I had before. Cause I was really stuck in a rut in my job before I worked in a lab. There was really no upward mobility and no, really no hope of moving upwards where I was at. Then after Let's see, we did start Whole30 in 2015. Mm -hmm. Later that year, I was able to get a job that really was fulfilling and gave me more flexibility with my home life and with my uh, the physical activities I like to do. Mm -hmm. Well, and you get to be outside for your job. Yeah, I'm not not stuck in one place all the time. Well, and what's really interesting when you interviewed for that job, you were interviewing for a different job that you didn't get, and they created a position. Yeah, just for you. Another position came open somewhere else and they kind of reworked it into our area so I could work there. Mm-hmm. You know, I think another really positive thing that happened in your life, you know, we're coming up to almost 2020 and you haven't had any alcohol for almost three years now. No, not a drop. That's one of the big things with going through Whole30. Those 30 days of eliminating certain food groups and alcohol just completely breaks old habits and rewires your brain Mm -hmm. and that that trip to florida where we didn't really do the proper reintroduction i only had like a handful of beers and i just never got the got the desire back to drink and went through that whole year and then decided at the end of that year i didn't feel like drinking anymore due to change of habit and yeah so now it's it'll be three years at the end of the month since i've had a drop of alcohol well and it's interesting too because i know for me now, like I've had a bottle of wine in the fridge for a very long time and I got some white claws in there and stuff too, but ain't no laws when you're drinking white claws. That's right, baby. No. <laughs> I don't drink as much. You know, I still like to no. socially have a drink or two, but that's it. Cause I know what how it's gonna make me feel if I drink more. Now there has been times I have drank more than one or two and I felt like absolute crap. But we used to drink just because you go and you drink till you can't drink anymore and that's just not good drink till you get sleepy it was just a yeah something i used to cope with the sleep and yeah had a habit and for sure whole 30 changed it so you haven't been drinking you've been using that i'm not drinking right now for line for about three years yeah now. <laughs> nothing wrong with that i kind of want to talk a little bit more about some other things that you started doing in your life because i know before you lost your weight it was really hard for you to run and you're a very competitive person you know you grew up running like we were just talking about you ran the mini marathon when you were 11 years old that's yeah. ridiculous H- how fast did you run it one hour and 57 minutes that's crazy the first year that's, i was in fifth grade that's fun but you found your competitive nature again and you started doing 
five Ks, you started doing half marathons again, you started doing Spartan races and you started doing them competitively and getting on the podium in your age group. Yeah. I mean, I think that was a big confidence booster just in that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, and was it two summers ago you were like, I want to run faster than I did in high school or junior high? You ran the mile. Yeah. So I, that's still one of my big goals. <laughs> I want to run faster than my fastest mile time and my fastest 5k time. So I'm, I'm still chasing both of those goals right now. But yeah. two summers ago, I was chasing a sub five mile and I was able to do it. I, I think it took five attempts back in 2017. And the, the fifth try was on a track. It was the true mile, 1,609 meters. I was able to run a 457 mile. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> At what, 37 think, yeah, years old? 37 years old that, yeah. that year. That's crazy. So I think that's just really interesting because I think a lot of this had to do with your mindset because you really set yourself on a goal. You kept feeling healthier in the best shape of your life mentally and physically. And you kept saying, why can't I push the limit? Why can't I do this? So can you talk about how your mindset changed and kind of how that's helped in your own journey the past couple of years? Oh, yeah. I'm just constantly looking for the next big challenge right now and trying to trying to figure out what's going to make me be my best self and mm -hmm. find my true potential with running and in life in general. Yeah. I think when you weren't sleeping really well and not feeling really healthy at all, I think you were stuck in such a negative mindset. There's no way you would have ever been like, oh, I can run under a five minute mile. That's still crazy fast. Or, you know, even think about doing some of the things you're doing now. And I, I want people to hear like, you know, there are ways to get out of whatever negative mindset you're in. And it, and it took time. That wasn't overnight. Well, that, that did happen fairly fast. Yeah. Because we did Whole30 September 2015. And then going into February of 2016, I was down 35 pounds already at that point. Yeah. I'd been running on the treadmill, pretty much only on the treadmill all winter. And I was getting pretty fast. And I found out about the Monumental Mile. It's just a one-mile road race downtown. So I signed up for that. And I went into that. I had no idea how fast I could run it, but I was going to go go as fast as I could. So that mindset was already there. Yeah. That that short end of the whole whole 30th journey. Mm -hmm. And even like we were talking about with your job and stuff, you went into it better mindset than you would have had mm -hmm. pre whole 30 as well. Well, and I know I can say I feel like our relationship improved after we both got healthier. I feel like we're still working on communicating with each other on certain things. And I think that's just normal in relationships. But I feel like there's such a team aspect in what we do, just living our lives where it's like, okay, we're in this together. We're here to do this. I'm supporting you. You're supporting me and my goals. And I feel like we're just, we've really grown in our relationship just from being healthier. Yeah. I mean, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like becoming healthier due to the whole 30 and learning how to reduce stress and anxiety in my life or our lives yeah. helped us get along better, communicate better. We found activities that we share that we like to do together, the Spartan races yeah. as families. Mm -hmm. And we've also got our own little hobbies that we're able to both enjoy and not be stressed out about. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I want to talk about... The Boston Marathon, because okay. I think this was so cool what you did this past year, and I think it was a really big opportunity for growth and a learning opportunity for you as well. So you decided you wanted to run a marathon. Yeah, well, I guess we should back up and say why I was able to run the marathon with the back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go back to your back. Okay, so... Let's talk about that. Going back to the back, um, going through losing the weight, I lost the 50 pounds. I was able to reduce a lot of the pain in my back. I didn't have terrible stabbing pain all the time, but still, when I'd be standing around, my foot would go numb. I'd have numbness down my leg, and my running was severely limited by this back pain. I couldn't put in the volume of training to even run a, a half marathon at the time, just because that that disc and that nerve would get so flared up. If I was to go out and do an eight mile run, I would be laid out on the carpet for two hours that night. Yeah. And I was using the TENS electrical unit, trying to numb the pain and ibuprofen. So long story short, 
I ended up visiting a doctor. I got a couple of shots in the back, which helped temporarily. But ultimately, I ended up getting a spine fusion surgery. And that was almost two years ago to the date. It was late November in 2017. The surgery was a 100% success, no back pain. I bounced back really fast from it. All of a sudden, I'm able to put in all the volume of um, miles to do half marathons. I can't believe I almost forgot to talk about your back. Well, and it's interesting because, you know, this all started with a doctor telling you, oh, you just can't run or, you know, lift weights because yep, your back's just, he you're broke. The, the first doctor told me to immediately stop running and don't lift weights standing up. I could lift, but lean back so my back is supported against a chair. And I thought that's not an option. No. Well, and you recovered so quickly from your surgery. And, you know, I think you tried everything naturally as far as like your health goes to see if that helped. But I think... You went in with it with a really great mindset, and you recovered so quickly as well. Yeah, I mean, four months after surgery, I ran my first half marathon since, I think it was 10 or 11 years. It was my fastest half marathon by four minutes. I ran an hour 28 minutes in a half marathon four months after surgery. It's <laughs> bananas when I think back to that. It was only four months after your yeah. surgery. Okay, so... After your back was fixed (laughs) and, you know, your running kept improving and improving, you had this idea in your head, I think I could run a marathon. And you you ran your own marathon around central Indianapolis. That's right. That that (laughs) idea came, I ran the monumental half marathon last year, and I had a pretty huge goal for that. I wanted to run sub-125. So I went out there and I did it. I was, I think, 11 seconds under an hour 25 but that's also the monumental half marathon and marathon and as the marathon are split off from us i just kept thinking to myself what if i did the whole marathon or could i do it that got the wheels turning about whether or not i could actually run the distance so the next saturday i went out and ran a marathon <laughs> by myself <laughs> <laughs> well tell them about where you ran because i think it was really cool so i ran from our house now back to where I grew up running, I ran around um, the track at the junior high where I broke a five-minute mile as an eighth grader, ran by my old house, through the neighborhoods I used to run, and then back home. And it was 26.2 miles. <laughs> that's crazy. So you were like, so I can do it. And that's without like properly training yep. according to a plan. So that's, that's with no marathon training. Pure grit. Yep. <laughs> Pure grit. And you even got chased by some people, by some hoodlums. Yeah, there were some sketchy <laughs> characters at one of the apartment complexes. That's that, why your parents don't live over yeah, there anymore. That's why I won't run through that area anymore. So that was a one-time thing. So, okay, so you did this and you decided, okay, I'm going to, you hired a coach to help you put together a marathon training plan and you went through marathon training. Yep. My big goal Right after I knew, right after I ran that marathon, I knew I wanted to try and qualify for the Boston Marathon in 2020. Now, why did you want to do it then? How's that saying go? Oh yeah, all things are possible with coffee and mascara. (laughs) Well, that's certainly true for me and I love to have my coffee every morning after my workout and I don't really leave the house without mascara. So my fellow blondies, I know you feel me on this. But gang, check it out. Having my coffee every morning is part of my self-care routine, and I always take my coffee blended with nut pods and coconut oil. So nut pods is a dairy-free creamer. It's made from a blend of almond butter and coconut cream. I love the French vanilla flavor. It's my favorite. It's super yummy, super smooth, but even better, it's Whole30 approved. So gang, head on over to nutpods.com and use the code EMILYNICHOLS22 to get 15% off your first order of Nut Pods. That's EMILYNICHOLS22, E-M-I-L-Y-N-I-C-H-O-L-S-22. And let me know once you receive your Nut Pods what your favorite flavor is and how you take your coffee. So remember, just head on over to nutpods.com. So yeah, I wanted to run the Boston Marathon in 2020 because that's the year I'll be turning 40 next year and my dad used to run several marathons and he ran the Boston Marathon on his 40th birthday and that was his first Boston so I thought it'd be pretty cool to be able to qualify run the Boston Marathon the year I turned 40. 
Yeah. So you went through the training, which was yes. really hardcore. And you did such a good job sticking with it. But you had some Achilles problems throughout it. I ran in the wrong shoes for about a year. And I did quite a bit of damage to my Achilles. Had some insertional Achilles tendonitis. And it just zapped my power yeah. out of my stride. So what, you had to take, what, almost like two weeks off? Yeah, I think I had close to two two full weeks off, and I lost one or two long runs and several workouts. Mm-hmm. Started going to physical therapy yeah, as went well. went to physical therapy for five weeks. Mm-hmm. And finally, about four or five weeks out from the marathon, I was able to get back into my training groove and mm-hmm. kind of finish it out. Mm-hmm. So that was, what month did you run, Erie? Uh, the marathon was September 9th. Okay, so this past September 9th, we were in Erie, Pennsylvania. You're wearing the shirt right now. Yeah. Oh, that is a nice shirt. Um, So you went and ran yep. that marathon. And I have to tell you guys, so, you know, you guys know I run half marathons. I hate running, but I do it for fun. Um, And that was the most high-strung amount of runners I've ever seen and the most fit runners I've ever seen because that was like a last chance Boston Marathon qualifier race. Yeah, I think think the deadline to run a race for Boston qualifying is September 15th or so. Yeah. So that was September 9th. So that was like the last weekend you could run. Yeah. So how did you feel going into that marathon? I felt awesome going into it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the morning of... I did my warm up and everything felt just very smooth. Your mindset was on point. You were so dialed in that morning. Yeah. You were so dialed in. So take us through those 26 26.2 miles. <laughs> I was so stressed out watching you the whole time. Were you stressed out? <laughs> I never felt stressed at all with that race. My A goal was to qualify for the Boston Marathon. Mm-hmm. So there's a time cut off for my age group, and that's three hours and five minutes. Yep. That was my drop dead goal that I definitely wanted to run 305, which is like a 704 pace. That's pretty fast for 26 <laughs> miles. But I got up to the start line. I knew I was in shape to run close to three hours or maybe even a little bit under. And there was a three hour pacer there. So Last minute decision, I just decided to run with the pace group, see how long I could hang. It was the uh, course was two 13.1 mile loops around an island there on Presque Isle in Erie, Pennsylvania. So we went through the first loop, I hit every water stop, everything was clicking perfectly. We went through the half marathon and 129.50, feeling awesome. Keep going, and there's people dropping like flies out of our pace group because there was probably 50 people and maybe 70 people at the at the start with our pace group and it just kept getting smaller and smaller made it through 15 miles feeling great and then a uh, mile 16 ended up being a pretty fast mile that i think burned me in the end it ended up being under under 630 pace when we'd been trying to run about a 650 pace there's a lot of strategy when it comes to running a marathon like you got to really stick to your pace or else like you said running that fast you paid for it later yeah, it's, on it's a gamble and if you put too much out too fast you're gonna burn bad and well don't they say like when you get to 20 miles that's yeah. the halfway 20 mark. miles is the halfway point yeah <laughs> yeah i found out that is true yeah so i made it through on pace about 20 and a half miles with the pacer and then all of a sudden the hamstring started to tighten and my feet started to hurt so i had to back off the gas pedal and I had a couple slow miles there and I was doing math in my head the whole time coming through about 24 miles what it was going to take to still hit 305 and I figured out what I needed so I was able to find another year and on mile 25 I think I ran a 730 mile and I knew I had to keep going and that last mile I was able to kick it back on pace and finish in somewhere around a 650 mile on the mm-hmm. last mile. And your final time was? Final time was 303.31. I thought I was either going to faint. I ended up standing next to this lady, and she could tell I was so nervous. And she said, who are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for my husband, Dustin. We got to talking, and she was from Carmel, Indiana. So we're practically hugging. And then when I see you, because I yell really loud when I cheer for Dustin. If you've ever seen a video, you usually hear, go, babe! But I'm hugging her, holding her, because I know he wanted to finish under three hours, and the time, the minutes just kept clicking. It was only 3.03, you know, when he finished. And 
It was emotional. I have never stood at the finish line. If you want to cry your eyes out, just stand there and watch people finishing a marathon. I mean, that's really, really far <laughs> mentally and physically. And the fact that that was your very first marathon, you did a 303, and you qualified for the freaking Boston <laughs> Marathon. I mean... Who does that? It was a really big accomplishment. How did you feel coming across the finish line? I just had chills coming across the finish line. Yeah. It was a pretty special moment. Yeah. So we get home and you have to go through, we won't get into the nitty gritty of registering for Boston because it's really yeah, there's, crazy. Bottom it's, line is every age group has a, a time standard that you have to hit in yeah. order to qualify. I qualified for it, and I had I was a minute and 29 under the time standard. But there is enough runners out there, enough fast runners that register for Boston that they actually have to make cuts based on time because they have too many runners and the field size is limited. And so you got cut. I got cut. By how many seconds? Ten seconds. Ten seconds. If you would have ran 11 seconds faster, you would have... We'd be going to Boston in April. Yeah. You think back, I could have made up 10 seconds anywhere in that race, yeah. especially my couple slow miles. But How did that feel when you got that email saying, sorry, you're 10 seconds too slow? <laughs> it was disappointing, but I couldn't do anything but just sit there and smile and shake my head. Yeah. And I think that says a lot about you. I Honestly, I think things come really easy to you. And I think it was a really great learning experience for you to go through the marathon training, have a struggle within it with your Achilles problems, you know, mm -hmm. com coming back from that, not qual qualifying for Boston, but I know you wanted to run under three hours, not necessarily a 303, which is still amazing. Yeah. And then being 10 seconds too slow, you could have just been like really, <laughs> really, really upset and thrown things. And I know I was so nervous waiting to find out. I was like, what if you don't make it? You were like, well, then I don't make it. <laughs> yep. If you don't make it, you don't. Yeah. So, but I just, that just goes to show the journey you've been on and just your mindset and all that. And I'm just really proud of you for how far you've come and nice. what all you're doing right now. So what are your upcoming goals this next year? So the day that I got the email that said not being accepted in <laughs> Boston, I started shopping around marathons because I knew that I had to run a spring marathon because I've got to do this all over again. But the bonus is I'll be 40 years old for the next, the 2021 Boston. So I'll be in the next age group. So I, I gain an additional five minute buffer. So I've got that going for me, but then I know what I need to do to train to even be faster. And so, you still want to go under three. Yeah. So my, <laughs> my goal is to be well under three hours and. And you have to run a 310. I have to run a 310 to qualify. As a 40 year old. Yeah. So my plan is to not have any question in my mind when I finish this next marathon, yeah. whether or not I'm in Boston yeah. for 2021. So this is December 2019. You're just getting ready to gear up for your marathon training yep. through this cold Indiana weather. I mean, you, you've trained for Erie through the really hot summer. Yeah. So that should be interesting. So you're going to do the Carmel Marathon? Yep. I signed up for the Carmel Marathon on Thursday. Oh, my gosh. I got butterflies <laughs> Just thinking about being there and how nervous I'll be for you, but no travel for this one. No, that'll be good. We just have to go up to the north side, which sometimes takes forever. But yeah. yeah, well, babe, I'm really proud of you. And like I said, all that you've accomplished and all that you've been through. I know you get a lot of messages from other men who you know are mid mid to late thirties, like like you. Yeah, saying, man, what are you doing? You know, it's mostly women that listen to my podcast. Like mm -hmm. maybe your dad might listen today. I don't know. That might be the only other dude or, and you listen to bless your heart. You're so sweet. But what advice would you give to a woman who's listening or anyone for that matter, who has a man in their life that they want to help get healthier mind and body? If I would have came to you in 2015 and been like, Hey babe, you need to lose weight and your attitude's crappy. <laughs> I don't think that would have gone over well. So yeah. what advice would you give to someone listening to help inspire, especially a male in their life to get healthier? It needs to be something that they want to do. Mm -hmm. And they would probably need to explain to them that it needs to be a team effort so they could both lean on each other going through the journey. Mm -hmm. 
and also look at people that have already gone through it to see what the benefits are and how it's changed other people's lives. Yeah. Like you said, you have to want it. And I think in 2015, you really wanted it. You really wanted a change in your life. And yeah. I was willing to go along on that ride with you. And it's totally changed our whole family's life. Mm-hmm. Really. All right. Well, thank you for being a guest on the show. Well, thanks for having me. This is not too weird, right? No. Nope. We're just sitting in the closet. <laughs> All right, you ready to go fall asleep on the couch and watch The Office? <laughs> no, my girlfriend Zoe. Oh, the She's dog. Out there okay, so for that me. that's our dog, you guys. Our Labrador is obsessed <laughs> with Dustin. So, well, if you want to give Dustin a follow, you can find him at Dustin Nichols nineteen eighty. Yep, on Instagram. On Instagram, so you can follow along with his next Boston journey, and he posts um a lot of really cool things just to see you know an almost forty year old. Getting better with age, in my That's opinion. Right. All right. Still chasing it. I love it. Thanks, babe. I love you. Love you. So that was fun. I have to give my husband, Dustin, a big pat on the back or maybe go cook him his favorite meal because that was really stepping outside of his comfort zone. Um, You know, we talk all the time, obviously, but being recorded and asking questions that are going to be aired um, on the pa- podcast is a little intimidating. So I really appreciated that, babe. Love you. I hope you're listening to this in your truck right now. So let's talk about my three biggest takeaways from this conversation with my husband, Dustin. Number one, sleep is vital to your health. Let me say it again for the people in the back. Sleep is vital to your health, which obviously this is where this downward spiral happened for Dustin. He was you know, doing all this different shift work. His sleep was so messed up and it just messed with his mindset. It messed with his um, weight gain. It was just not a good situation. And it was just a constant roller coaster of emotions and stress and tension and anxiety. And it wasn't healthy for anyone in our family, but most importantly, him. So, you know, we, he was able to get control of his sleep And I know there's people out there that don't get enough sleep because you're going through maybe a hard time right now, or you have a new baby, or, you know, you just have a lot of stress or worry on your mind. I get it. But sleep is going to do your health wonders. If you're able to get to bed a little bit earlier, if you're able to sleep in a little bit more, or get on some type of routine and ritual every night to get you ready for bedtime, it's like I said, it's just vital to your health. And just speaking from experience with Dustin, I mean, we tried everything. I try, I bought like these hypnotherapy CDs. You know, he tried all these different um, medications from the doctor to help him sleep, which were no good. They were just like, <laughs> he was high as a kite and just never like authentic sleep. It was just drugged up sleep. The thing that worked for him to get him back on a good sleep pattern was actually acupuncture. But it was a very, very long journey. And like I said, I know sometimes you're going through hard things in your life, but sleep is so vital. So you need to make it a priority in regards to your health. My second biggest takeaway from this conversation is to set goals for yourself. You know, Dustin set some really big adventurous goals for himself and he believed he could do it. And I think that was half the battle. You know, we're really big believers in our faith, but we also really believe in asking for what you want, believing it's going to come and being willing and willing and able to accept that, you know, the secret, if you know what I'm talking about, ask, believe, receive. But, you know, it doesn't have to be fitness related like Dustin's goals where it could be something professionally. It could be something, you know, um, as far as setting a goal every morning to um, do a self-care checklist or just drink more water. Or like I said earlier, sleep is so vital, getting to bed earlier. You can set some goals in your life, you know, write them down, things that you think are able, you are able to achieve. Have a plan in place, some strategy. You know, he put a lot of training into hitting those numbers on all his runs. But most importantly, believe you can do these goals. If you believe you're never going to be able to do it, guess what? You're right. And lastly, just enjoy the ride. Just enjoy the journey. You know, when we talked about his Boston Marathon training and journey and how he missed um, 
missed getting into Boston for 2020 by 10 seconds, which still sucks. I think I was more heartbroken than he was for it. But, you know, that's just all part of the journey and our learning experience as far as, you know, not always getting what you want, but having the right attitude and pressing forward. And that's just all part of the journey and giving yourself grace and knowing that, you know, sometimes it takes time. He's not going to be able to go um, to the Boston Marathon and run it till 2021. And, you know, maybe this year just wasn't meant to be that this whole next year of him training and getting prepped for 2021 is all just part of the next chapter of his journey. So thanks again for listening. I will link in the show notes Dustin's Instagram if you want to go check him out and see what he is up to. Right now it's a lot of hunting and he just is just starting marathon training this past couple of weeks. So it's a lot of running and hunting and family, (laughs) which is some of the most important things to him. So babe, I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And gang, if you would please be so kind, leave a rating and review down below in iTunes. It's super easy. You know, I think a lot of people are quick to leave negative reviews. Like if you go to a restaurant and you get crappy service. But if you're really enjoying the show, please leave a rating and review. It's super easy. It will literally take you two seconds. You can do it while I'm talking right now. Go give it five stars if you love it. Write down what you loved about it. It makes it easier for people to find and connect with the show. So thank you again for listening. I appreciate you so much. Make sure to follow along with me on social media at Emily. Nichols 22 or at self care isn't selfish podcast. So until next time, remember self care isn't selfish. Bye gang. Bye.